Okay, Warren. All right, so we are going to be practicing our session for uh, AWS reInvent. We're on, uh, we're demo 60 or something uh, on the partner stage, Pilby Theater uh, tomorrow, which is Wednesday at 12, 10 p.m. And this uh, very janky recording is going to go up on YouTube because uh, we publish all our videos. So here goes nothing. And oh, just FYI, Dan is going to play Sid's part. Sid is our CEO. Cool, so let's get started. All right, reinventing your pipeline with GitLab, Kubernetes, and Amazon EKS. Hi, I'm Sid, CEO of GitLab. And I'm Priyanka, Director of Cloud Native Alliances at GitLab. At GitLab, we believe that everyone can contribute. Making this possible is our mission. It's what drives not just our product vision, but also how we run our company. GitLab is used by over 100,000 organizations across the DevOps lifecycle. It's the first single application for planning, software development, security, and operations. Yep, and a single application is the biggest reason folks resonate with GitLab. This, this is because there is a tool chain crisis happening in today's ecosystem. It delays organizations from getting the advantages that DevOps can bring them. That's right. There's a lot of tools out there, and the challenge that people have is keeping them all integrated. Um, there's tools that have lots of plugins to make the functionality that you need work, uh, and the integration work and maintenance challenges are large in keeping those all running together. Plus, with multiple tools, we have the problem of context switching with your developers and your operations and your security people need to switch between pools just to get information about what they've just run and what status they're at. If you can switch, uh, it's time lost. So, um, so we, we ideally want to not have the switching happen. Plus, uh, this also means that across the different tools, not everyone has the same visibility of all of the data. So it's harder to work and, and slows everything down. As a matter of fact, we originally thought that it didn't make sense to have everything as one. We, we didn't originally get that idea. Uh, and then Dimitri, our founder, uh, when we had uh, GitLab CI separate, uh, he said, you know, these need to be together. And, uh, and we, through some convincing, we put them together and found that the, uh, uh, the CI and the FDM and found that the sum is greater than the part. Right. Um, GitLab's mission as a single application does not preclude it from playing nice with others. So in fact, we have great integrations with popular tools such as Jira, Jenkins, GitHub, and of course, GitHub, uh, GitLab integrates with AWS and Amazon Elastic Container Services to give you a one-stop instant software factory. You know, in fact, many of our customers will tell you that GitLab is the best way to get your organization practicing DevOps software de delivery at scale. So today, we're going to show you why, does it, why do all these people think this? So you, we've already discussed that GitLab covers the entire DevOps lifecycle. It can help you manage and plan with features such as issue tracking, issue boards, roadmaps, milestone, etc. cetera. Uh, you'll see these on the manage and plan side in this chart here. But today we have very limited time, only 20 minutes total. So we're gonna jump straight into the create part and onwards and take you through the entire DevOps lifecycle of code as it goes through version control, CICD pipelines, and then it's deployed and monitored on Kubernetes on Amazon EKS. Yeah, Priyanka, let's bring up that Spring app uh, so that we can show the audience how GitLab can make the development flow so much better. Sure, yeah, let's do it. So we started a welcome app in Spring, but the main page is still pretty generic uh, and we need to update it to the GitLab style. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and we all, I already have the code in GitLab, which is what we use to build, build and ship code ourselves. So I'm going to go there and let's just take it away. Folks, this is a live demo, so please be kind to me. <laughs> okay, so 
here I have already got code in this repo in GitLab. My colleague, Dan Gordon, has helped me a lot with this demo. So you'll see his picture and name in quite a few places. So I have my code in this, reposit in the, in this repository. Before we jump into making a code change and taking, the, uh, taking things from idea to production, I'd like to show you some configuration. So you will see that in settings, um, Oh, sorry, in operations, in the Kubernetes tab, here we have a, a Kubernetes cluster already set up that works with um, Amazon. Uh, you can, and, you can, um, and you can actually add as many Kubernetes clusters as you like. So if we go in here, what you'll see is that we have a bunch of applications that are uh, utilities that we have already installed here, um, including Prometheus. So as we go through this demo, you'll see how you get some free monitoring, which is always nice. Um, if you look at the, sorry, if you look at the cluster details, here you can see Amazon AWS. So we're all connected and all set already. Um, so yeah, so that's my uh, Kubernetes setup. Now I am going to show you one quick thing before we jump into the code. I go into settings and CICD. And here, what I have enabled is Auto DevOps. Um, Auto DevOps is a best practice pipeline that GitLab offers people so that they can just push code and then it goes through a full CI CD pipeline and then deploy, deploys to Kubernetes clusters. All, and while doing that, it goes through various tests, security checks, um, and finally uh, pushes code to Kubernetes clusters on your cloud of choice, followed by um, monitoring for free. DevOps, uh, Auto DevOps is not mandatory. It's just an one option that you can use. If you like, you can incorporate pieces from Auto DevOps into your existing pipelines, or you can, uh, or you can change Auto DevOps to include new things. It's yours to do what you will with it. Um, now here you'll see the domain. I've set it up with this service called nip.io to make it easy. Also deployment strategy wise, I have a lot of options. I could do continuous deployment to production or use incremental rollouts. However, I am going to deploy to staging and then do a manual deploy to production. This is a best practice so that uh, once it's in staging, other departments or teams can take a look as necessary to follow the procedures of your team. So with that really quick intro, I'm going to now dive into the code. So I'm gonna go back to this project. Now I wanna, uh, let me show you the, what the page looks like that I got right now. As Sid said, it's pretty basic. Hello from GitLab, whatever. We're gonna jazz it up. So I go into the web ID over here. So this is quite nice because even though everybody has their own preferred environments, mine, sublime text, don't judge. Um, for quick changes, it's nice to have something um, within your, um, main tool chain. So here I can actually access all my files. Now I know that the file that I want to change is hello controller. I click that. Um, and oh, look, there's a personalized, this says to do personalize this message. This to do is going to be important shortly. So I'm going to say <coughs> hello, reinvent love from GitLab. I am also going to change this color from green to a beautiful brand appropriate purple. Now I've got a cheat sheet here for the hex code. So, oops, gosh, I hate this. One second. Uh, okay, here's my cheat sheet. I'm gonna use this. Um, oops. Background color change. I also will add a cute Tanuki, Tanuki image. For that, again, I have some code in my cheat sheet notepad. Copy, I hate this. <laughs> are you only sharing your desktop or, or are you sharing? Paste. Oh, I'm sorry, are you only sharing the browser or are you sharing the whole desktop? Just browser. Okay, that's fine, I'll see you. All right, and now because I have finished the to-do, I'm going to delete this. This is going to be important because as the demo progresses, you'll see something related to this to-do come up. So now I've made the changes that I wanted to make. Um, and it says here that I have one unstaged change and I can hit commit, which I do. Now it gives me the diff, which is super useful for a quick check. Now here on stage changes, it only shows one, but what's useful is that when you have multiple, you can pick what you want to actually go to stage. I'm clicking stage all changes, hit commit again. Now I'm gonna put in a message, make it pretty. 
then here I have the option to commit to master or create a new branch or create a new branch and merge request. I'm going to do that because that's the best practice. I'm not going to change the name right now. I'm going to hit commit. Uh, all right, all changes are committed. And now we have a merge request to make. This is epic. Okay, now I can assign this to myself. Uh, there are all these options. I could set up an approver to check this for me. If I had code owner set up, there could be auto approvers done. It's a pretty cool new feature we have. Now here, I am going to check remove source branch when merge request is accepted to just keep things clean. All that is done, now I'm gonna submit my merge request. Excuse me. So now it kicks off a pipeline to deploy to staging. Remember, that's what we chose back when we were setting up the auto DevOps configuration. So here a pipeline has started for me. I'm going to click it. And here you see the auto DevOps pipeline that I talked about. Now, this is where I do a little bit of sleight of hand and have a cake in the oven ready to show. Like a magician, I'm going to change, <laughs> change things, but unlike a magician, I'm gonna tell you exactly what I'm doing in our GitLab spirit of transparency. So here, as you can see, the pipeline is just starting to run. So I have an identical project where I've made the, like, very, the same changes that is available for me, um, AWS one and here you can see the pipeline has already passed. So this is because pipelines take some time. I'm going to just go through this over here. Um, so build is basically it, so all this is the dev, auto DevOps pipeline. Build means we use uh, Docker build files or if that's not there, uh, Heroku build packs to uh, determine what language is, the code is in and then build the new image, which is then uh, stored in our container registry. Then in the test section, there's code quality, which does a static scan uh, of you know, qualitative uh, things that can be um, an issue with the code. Then container scanning checks your application containers for any vulnerabilities. Dependency scanning looks at any open source uh, code dependencies that you have and uh, make sure to pr protect you from uh, known vulnerabilities. License management uh, checks all the open source dependencies that you have and um, ensures that you don't accidentally accept um, some open source license that may have gone viral or is just for some reason against your company policy. SAST here is static application security testing and it goes through your code to make sure that any um, known security vulnerabilities are not present. Then test is the test that you as a company may have created as I had a test folder in my um, in my files, and that's what's here, which can be unit tests, functional tests, all kinds of those things. Now, those all have run here. The next thing that happens is we go to staging. Now, this is where some cool stuff happens, which is that we build a review app. And what, does, what that review app does is that it makes it possible for you to actually have a live app running on the Kubernetes cluster that you already have. So you, it's, ephemeral, it's an ephemeral instance and you can check it to send people like the link to see the changes in live, uh, like it, it, on their devices or however they wanna do it. They can also, um, and based on that, we can also do dynamic application security testing because uh, that's only possible when it's a running application. So we do all of those things and then uh, if everything looks okay, we can hit to production um, and do 100% rollout. Now, if you remember, we decided that going to production was going to be uh, a manual decision. That's why it is like that over here. So I'm going to click that. So it'll kick off a production pipeline. All right, now it's working on that, as you can see. Now, to really understand the value of uh, auto DevOps and all this goodness, we should go back to the merge request because here you see in the merge request are all the inf is all the information from this pipeline run. So I see here that uh, their memory changes. I also see that code quality improved on this one point. And this, if you remember, there was a to-do that I deleted and that's what it's talking about. Performance metrics have changed, which means we did a site speed.io check and we saw some issues and some improvements. This one is very important, security scanning. So I can look at all of my security report in one go. I just click that and here we are. Here you can see, okay, I can expand this right away. I see there is one, the vulnerability, I click, I get more details, I can click these, I can dismiss the vulnerability or create an issue to help people 
move forward with this. Uh, dependency, dependency scanning worked really well. Now, container scanning saw all of these various vulnerabilities, and I have the option of either dismissing, creating an issue, learning more. Now, in DAST here, it also did the same thing. We have one thing that we found. We can learn the descriptions, and then we can, sorry, my screen is awful, and we can dismiss or create an issue as with the others. All right, so with that all said, let's go back. Here, um, license management is another really useful thing that you, oops, sorry, manage, I should not have clicked that, I apologize. But, mm -mm -mm -mm. right, okay, here, do, 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 do. that was my mistake, forgive me. <laughs> okay, here I can view the full report of licenses as well, which is the open source licenses that we are using. And here you see the whole list. Again, you can blacklist, you can learn more, you can blacklist, you can approve. Uh, you have all these options that you can take care of. So, um, oops, sorry, sorry. Let me go back to my, where did my merge request go? Whoops. Close this tab. We'll close this tab. Oh, right, sorry. And then, um, all right, so the same goes for license management. All that is done. Now, this says here that it was merged by Dan a day, a day ago, which is the case, because as I told you, this is a cake baking in the oven. Um, so this is all ready. Now, what we can do here is go to settings and check our, sorry, not settings. I always make this mistake. Go to environments and check what is our setup on the Kubernetes side. So here you can see that we have the staging thing 100% complete, all set up, and we can look at the review app, open live environment, which I had, and look, these are the new changes I've made. Look at this, we have it all different and pretty with the GitLab colors, so pretty, right? So much better than the old one. So from here, I know everything's looking good and I'm pretty happy, and I can proceed to production and ro hit rollout. Now, from staging. Oh, sorry. Then I can deploy and I hit roll out 100%. What this will do, it will kick off the production, deploy to production pipeline. And let's see, I guess it's gonna work shortly. It's still going. So we wait and we wait. <laughs> do I refresh? Yeah. I'm going to refresh my page just to see the new thing kicked off. If you if you end up that way, having a stall like this, you can talk about like the what are these little green boxes, right? How they relate mm -hmm. to Kubernetes. Now here, by the way, you'll see these five boxes. These show that I have five instances of the Kubernetes clusters running because that's what we assumed should be the need for the load. We can uh, re increase and decrease it with configurations over here. Now, in terms of my um, Deploy, it should be, I'll go check the pipeline maybe. So go to, it should be done. So if you go to production and look at the, uh, look at the, the app, then it should be the new stuff. So now I'm going to look at open this yeah. and, oh look, it's purple and gorgeous. As and it is, fact, in, and now I'm, Huh? You could also potentially go to your original one that you brought up, your last tab there. I can also redo this and let's see what happens. Oh, there we go. So it's all working. We're all set and we know that now. Now, all this is ready and here's the final kicker. I am going to go to monitoring tab and I get to this performance data page. It always takes a second, so this is not abnormal. Do, do, do. Because it's gathering the data live from all the different systems. Uh, and uh, and here we are. So here you get system metrics about your pod average, core usage, and all of that. Um, so you see these various lines which show you the various deploys, uh, deploys, and it's really useful because, so for example, there is a spike over here. And if this was a problem, you have the option to click on this and check out what exactly changed to and very, oh, like, so this was a change by Dan Gordon. So we know, like, and we can see the change exactly here. So gosh, Dan, <laughs> just kidding. He, he built awesome all problem. of this, so it's all good. Um, sorry, waiting for the performance again. One second. I'll do this as a new, 
uh, new time next time. Um, same for the memory usage. Uh, we see response metrics from Nginx, error rates, which are important. And again, you can debug right from here um, if you see a problem. And because it links to the um, merge request where the change was made. And that way you know exactly where the problem was and you can debug um, quickly because you know what the issue was. So all that is to say that, oops, sorry. <laughs> did I go? Yeah. So all that was a quick, very quick tour through the GitLab software delivery factory. We went from uh, picking up, a, uh, looking at a repo of code, making a change there, and then running the CI CD auto DevOps pipeline, doing a bunch of tests and making sure it was very well to get sick tested from a security perspective, looked at a beautiful review app that we could send to anybody that we needed to. We pushed from staging to production and then got free monitoring from Prometheus out of the box. So that is software development operations and security with GitLab. If you're interested, we would love to talk more with you. Please do stop by the GitLab booth 2608. Hope to see you soon. Thank you so much. Let's stop the recording now. <laughs>